Hi guys, James Earl with CS Breakdown here, and today we're going to be going over the difference between algorithms that run in pseudo-polynomial time versus polynomial time. So let's dive in. So now we're going to take a look at the subtle differences between polynomial runtime algorithms and pseudo-polynomial runtime algorithms. So, but first we're going to just try to define polynomial runtime. So of course you're all very familiar with the big O notation, and very generally you can consider a polynomial runtime as something that is big O of n to the k for some constant k. Now keep in mind that polynomial is of this form, but I'm going to kind of reference polynomial as also encapsulating these other pretty good runtimes because all of these are polynomial or better. They could be logarithmic or linear. And um, I'm just going to kind of use polynomial as this umbrella because, of course, if it's linear, it's better than polynomial. So we're using polynomial as this sort of boundary that meets pseudo polynomial because there's a very subtle difference between these two and then we kind of get into some uh, some ordering of these runtimes okay so essentially a polynomial runtime is exactly what we've got here or anything better but a pseudo polynomial runtime is actually going to be based off of the length of the input so generally you consider n to in your uh, big O notation as the size of the input, but we need to consider the length of the input and what it requires to represent that input physically in say your computer's memory. So for big O of n in some sorting algorithms, n would be the number of integers in the sorting algorithm. But the big O of n, when we're actually considering the number of bits it requires your computer to represent this input, is actually, it could be 32-bit integers, so it would be 32n. And um, this is a pretty key distinction when we're considering certain algorithms, because a lot of them generally are the same when you consider the bits, or when, when you consider the pure number of inputs, let's say the number of nodes in a tree, for example. But there's a few very key examples that don't actually portray this. Um, and we're going we're gonna to discuss a few right now. So the key example um, used in a lot of explanations of pseudo-polynomial is actually this primality test. So this test here is just a loop from 2 to n minus 1. And if at any point you find n mod i is equal to 0, you've found something that divides n, and then it is not a prime number. So just taking a look at this, you would assume, well, yeah, it's big O of n. The loop just runs from 2 to n minus 1. So it's going to go just a little bit less than n, right? But um, the, the thing to note here is that it's actually not going to be linear. It's not going to be big O of n in the length of the input. So there is some work to be done. And certainly, this could be, could be run in polynomial time. But because of the space it requires, let's say you gave them a 300 digit integer, that's actually going to be non polynomial, that's an exponential growth in the size of the input. So the length of the input in bits is going to grow exponentially. Because let's say you have an eight bit, um, an eight bit integer, if you add one more bit, and you can you've increased the number of uh, integers you can represent exponentially. So two to the power of that number of bits is why this is considered pseudo polynomial. So the loop is actually linear, but the length of the input again is going to be based off of the number of bits it requires to represent the, the given input. Okay. So. This is a pseudo polynomial algorithm, and it's a fairly simple one. So I think a pretty good example, or a better example at least, is the integer knapsack problem. This is actually something I've covered already, and if you haven't seen my video on the dynamic programming solution to the video to the uh, integer knapsack problem, pardon me, then feel free to check it out. But this is actually another case. So it's big O of n times m where n is the number of items you can take, and m is the max weight for the knapsack. But the reason this is pseudo-polynomial is because the, um, the you have to build the table of n times m, and that table requires cross-referencing, and it, the amount of space it's going to take 
is reliant on the number of um, items and the maximum weight. So the space that that table is going to take is greater than, um, than polynomial time, of course. So it, it grows at an exponential rate. And this is actually what makes this a, non, a uh, non-polynomially complete problem. So it's, it's NP complete. And um, of course, if P equals NP, then this would really be a polynomial runtime, but we don't have these kind of algorithms yet. So the number of bits that it takes to represent this problem using dynamic programming, even though it's a very efficient solution, it's actually growing at a higher rate than what would be considered polynomial. So as a result of this, uh, we're not actually able to say this is a polynomial runtime, despite the fact that it looks very, it looks polynomial, it's n times m. You would assume, of course, this is polynomial, but in this sense, it's not. So this is, uh, this was just a very brief kind of high level explanation of how polynomial and pseudo polynomial sort of come into play. And the reason I wanted to do this is because we're going to be referencing a few pseudo polynomial algorithms in the future. So I wanted it to be very clear what we're talking about when we mean pseudo polynomial. So again, to recap, the big key difference is polynomial algorithms consider the size of n, the input, in a number of different ways. It can actually vary. It could be the number of integers in a sorting algorithm or the number of nodes in a tree. But the more concrete definition that applies to all algorithms is the number of bits it requires to represent your input. And as a result, the number of bits can actually grow exponentially in a lot of cases. So this is where pseudo polynomial comes in. And that's our definition. So I hope this has kind of cleared some things up. Uh, feel free to check out our other videos on CS Breakdown and like and favorite, leave any feedback you have in the comments. Thanks.